Okay, I'm back again. We're going to go with chapter 32. Actually, too much fudge. Running down the stairs was easier than going up, and before the paint was dry on the side of the van, Zoe was breathlessly showing Armitage the results of her and her father's hard work. Dad climbed into the van and opened the sliding hatch. Zoe had never seen her father looking so happy. Oh, right, uh, so uh, you're my first customer. What would you like, madam? Um, Zoe surveyed the flavours. It was a very long time since she had tasted the delicious frozen dessert. She wasn't even sure if she'd ever had ice cream since those evenings when her dad would rush home from the factory with some crazy new flavour for her to try. Um, uh, cone or cup, madame? asked dad, already relishing his new job. Cone, please, replied Zoe. Any uh, particular flavour? Uh, take a fancy? asked dad with a smile. Zoe leaned over the counter and studied all the long line of mouth-watering flavours. After all those years in the factory, Dad really did know how to make some truly scrumptious ice cream. There was triple chocolate sundae, strawberry and hazelnut swirl, fudge fudge and more fudge, toffee popcorn explosion, caramel and honeycomb crunch, fudge tax stick surprise, tutti frutti looty, raspberry ripple with dark chocolate chunks, double fudge and coconut cream, Cookie and caramel crunch, fudge, 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 and more fudge, toffee and peanut butter swirl, pistachio and white chocolate, banoffee pie with mega fudge chunks, butterscotch bonbon boom, marshmallow milkshake supreme, quadruple choc chip with honey swirls, mini chocolate egg and fruits of the forest, snail and broccoli, fudge, 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 actually now too much fudge. It was the most magnificent collection of ice cream flavours in the world. Apart from the snail and broccoli, obviously. Uh, they all look delicious, Dad. It's just too hard to make a decision. Father peered down at his array of ice creams. Uh, then I will just have to give you uh, one of each then. OK, said Zoe. But maybe leave out the snail and broccoli. Her dad bowed. As you wish, madame. As his daughter giggled, he piled up her cone with flavour after flavour until it was nearly as tall as she was. With Armitage in one hand, she balanced the impossibly tall ice cream cone in the other. I can't eat all of this on my own, Dad, laughed Zoe. She looked up at the tower block and saw Tina looking down from the 7th, 37th floor window. Tina, come down, shouted Zoe at the very top of her voice. Soon lots of children were poking their faces out of the windows of the flats, wondering what all the noise was about. All of you, shouted Zoe up at them. She recognised a few of them, but most of them she didn't know. Some of them she had never seen before in her life, even though they were all so closely crammed together in this huge, ugly, leaning building together. Come down, everyone, and help me finish my ice cream. Within seconds, hundreds of kids with dirty but eager little faces were rushing down to the car park to take their turns to have a bite of Zoe's ridiculously tall ice cream. After a few moments, the little girl entrusted the tower of ice cream to Tina, who made sure all the kids received their fair share, especially the tiny ones whose little mouths couldn't reach that high. As the sound of laughter rose and the sun went down, smiling Zoe broke away from the laughing children and sat all alone on a nearby wall. She brushed the litter off the wall and brought Armitage up to her face. Then she gave him a tender little kiss on the top of his head. Thank you, she whispered to him. I love you. Armitage tilted his head and looked up at her with the sweetest little smile on her face. <laughs> he said, which of course from rat to English translates as Thank you. I love you too. <laughs> okay, that is officially the end of the story, but there is an epilogue which we will go into now. So. Oh, thank you, uh, Miss Midget. Uh, I mean Midge, for the beautiful tuba playing, lied Mr. Grave. It had been truly awful, like a hippopotamus farting. Miss Midge tottered off the stage at the school talent show, unseen behind her huge heavy instrument. Uh, that way, Miss Midge, called Mr Grave in a concerned voice. 
Oh, thank you, Headmaster! came a muffled voice just before Miss Midge crashed into the wings. The tuba sounded better hitting the wall than when she was playing it. Oh, I'm all right! called Miss Midge from beneath her ridiculously large tuba. Oh, uh, uh, right, uh, said Mr. Gray. Oh, you might give me, give me the kiss of life, though! Mr. Gray impossibly went even more pale. Uh, uh, next! He said, ignoring the teacher struggling beneath her ridiculous brass instrument. Please welcome the final act to the stage, uh, Zoe. There was a cough from the side of the stage. Mr. Grave looked down at his sheet of paper. Oh, uh, Zoe and Tina. The audience all applauded, none louder than Dad, who was sitting proudly in the front row. Raj was sat next to him, clapping excitedly. Zoe and Tina ran on in matching tracksuits and took a bow. Then Tina lay down on the stage as Zoe set up what looked like little ramps either side, which they had made from cereal boxes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please welcome the amazing Armitage, said the little ginger girl. At that moment, Armitage sped across the stage riding a wind-up toy motorbike that Dad had bought from a charity shop and repaired and wearing a tiny crash helmet. The crowd went wild just at the sight of him. Apart from Raj, who covered his eyes in fear, he was still scared of rodents. You can do it, Armitage, whispered Zoe. When they had practiced, he had sometimes missed the ramp and just drove past it, which didn't make for a very exciting show. Armitage whizzed faster and faster as he reached the ramp. Come on, come on, come on, thought Zoe. The little rat hit the ramp perfectly. Yes, Armitage took off. Armitage flew through the air. Oh no, thought Zoe. He was coming down too soon. He was going to miss the ramp on the other side. Down, 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 Armitage fell. Zoe held her breath. And then he landed on Tina's ample tummy, bouncing back up into the air. And landed on the ramp on the other side. It was a moment of pure and utter joy. It probably even looked deliberate. Oof! said Tina. Eek, said Armitage, bringing his motorbike to a perfect stop. The audience instantly rose to their feet and gave them a standing ovation that went on for ages. Raj even peeked out from behind his hands. Zoe looked at Armitage, then Tina, then her dad, who was clapping like a madman. She couldn't help but smile. And that is the end of our book, The Rat Burger by David Walliams. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a long old trudge, um, but it's been thoroughly enjoyable for me to record these videos and I hope uh, you've enjoyed the story too. Okay, look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.